yo soy como un árbol pegado a la tierra y nadie es mi When I look at the art of Juana Peña, I think of the frontera, the frontier land between Bolivia and Argentina, the land where rivers dance, where clouds touch the ground, and where the shy plant, which closes its leaves at the touch of a finger, blooms. Here, hiking means walking with the cows, and morning means drinking the yerba mate. Traveling involves crossing the river in a car and preparations for every fiesta involve making pinatas out of paper mache for days, then drying them and painting them with loving hands. People live and breathe art here. It's perhaps the pinata popular all over Latin America that bears the closest resemblance to Juana Pena's whimsical and colorful art. What attracts me to this art and its creator is that for the last 35 years, Juana Pena has made a living from it. Not the typical struggling life of a starving artist, but a comfortable life. People buy her idiosyncratic art because it's uninhibited and also because it's made by human hands right here in the United States of America. So what got you interested in art? Uh, how did you relate to art? I remember seven, eight years old. I started drawing, yeah. The South Bolivia. Border with Argentina. I think it's uh, something inside you, something uh, called attention. Uh, what I remember is the I, I watch every day the river, you know, pass. I, I live like one block from the river, and I see every day how they move all the time, you know, always alive. And also I see the sunset, since I remember the same sunset with mountains, you know, high mountains it's around my town. So that inspired me. Yeah. When you were growing up, did you consider other work or did you always think of working as an artist and earning a living that way? Only art, yeah. Um, what attracted me is uh, clay, because in the countryside they make their own um, you know, they, they cook in their own pots. They make, so I learned to do that too. But uh, after I made my designs, I painted on the top, you know, little sculptures, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you went to college to study oh. art? Oh. Uh, after I uh, left Bolivia, I went to Buenos Aires, Argentina, to get the art class, yes. So uh, that, that town, I mean, it's a big city, Buenos Aires, is, uh, I find out I can make my living. And then not only that, I can travel in, selling my work. Mm -hmm. So you started doing that? You yes. started traveling? Yes. So the idea was, um, well, I painted Indian designs because for some reason that time I like Indian cultures of Bolivia, Indians, Argentinian, and later start the Mexican, like Azteca and Maya. So I paint on, on the top of the leather. So that I sell to the tourists, so the tourists said, well, you should mo see um, Indian, like Maya, in Mexico. So it came my idea to come to Mexico and find out with my own eyes, you know, all this big culture they had. So you came to Mexico? Yeah, I came to Mexico with my sisters, uh, selling my work all the way from Bolivia. I start from La Paz, we, we sell to stores or to the tourists, and the lady, uh, Peru, Cusco, I spent like two months in Cusco, summertime that time. And the lady, we moved to Ecuador, Colombia, and Venezuela, 
and, and that we make it good money in selling my work in Venezuela because it was that time was a rich country. So after that, we we fly directly to to Central America and let it uh, drive in, you know, to Mexico City. In LA, there I stayed. Uh, I find out all the culture like Maya, Azteca, Tikal, you know, those places amazing. So tell me how you got here to the United States. Okay, uh, it's my my sister idea. I just don't care, you know. I don't care. I don't even think about. It. Just we, it just happens, you know. My sister went to see America, and the and also after the journey to Mexico, we went back to Bolivia, see my family, and we, we came again because we, it's hard to get visa for us, you know, we don't have no money that time. So we came for Brazil, all the Amazon, we traveling for two months, um, all the Amazonas. River, we take the river for one week, uh, you know, to get to uh, Venezuela. So we get the visa in, in the border because not many tourists happen passing by. So we get good visa, you know, the rich country that time, Venezuela. So we're making enough money to fly to, like, uh, to directly to United States. Mm -hmm. And how did you start your artwork here? Uh, well, it's, it's the only thing I know. <laughs> so that's why I started selling my, my my work in, in Berkeley, in, you know, in the university outside in the stream. And then later I started doing the uh, shows. And by, you know, I find out uh, I can do other materials, you know. Like now I do metal since uh, more than 30 years, metal, in different styles. Like um, I do before uh, plants, flowers, you know, decorated walls. And then later, I start, start doing the painting, where I, I got more successful because uh, not only patina acid, you know, green, only green, but now I do color. Show you how, how we do the process before to do all this welding and painting. Paper, mostly I double, that cut all the shape in paper. A lot of times I, I put together in paper and and see how, how the piece will be. But when I'm ready, I have this plastic <coughs> that's good for making this pieces hard. So the paper I'm drawing here. So I cut this part in each shape for at least this shape. that I have two, two areas like this this area and the, sometimes some, some pieces have the three or four pieces together, okay? So he kept it, we had all these parts in different, I had like over a hundred pieces at least, because the old one, or the new one, like everything. Okay. So after that drawing, I had this and later this part going in the middle. Like so you thing. hold it against the metal and cut it? Yes. Now we still carry and that shaped the metal, right? We yeah. saw that yesterday. And the later we get, we get the pieces that we just had before, and the bending, and make shapes. Mm -hmm. All everything. And the later after that, we do the welding, put together. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we do the paint. So right now we do part of the. Under the insect wings, you want to cut by, by hand. What do you do? Cut it by hand. Most pieces are cut by hand. Mm -hmm. What we, we're cutting right now is the shape of the wings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just one. It's a lot of work, huh? Yeah, some pieces are a lot of work. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. How did you think of making the birds and insects and animals? What drew you to them? Uh, I start with birds. First, I don't know, I just always 
see the birds as the, the animal, I look like more free than anything else, you know. Always I said, oh, I'd like to be a bird. But that time, I, s is, I think it's, it's freedom, you know. That's why I, I think also colors, you know, I like, uh, um, I don't know, sounds in my imagination come from my background, I guess. And then later I start doing insects because um, my daughter watches movies, uh, so I see ants and I see insects more, uh, more attractive. And now I do all kinds of animals, you know. I can do anything. How did you learn the techniques? Did you work with someone else or did you just always work on your own? I see people welding. The, the, this was the 79. You know, uh, after two years I've been doing leather in America, but I see it are popular. So I'm just watching how they're doing and making my so own tools to, to make shapes, you know. And welding, now we do a lot of electric welding too, you know, for to make it very strong, because this is very strong. So, mm. and when did you start the workshop? I started working in my garage since uh, I came to America, in my garage, and I laid there. I want to have, I go and spend, always I want to have uh, something like this, you know, this is my dream, actually, <laughs> this is what, I don't, I don't expect to be so big, really, but uh, I think you have to have something in your mind, uh, maybe you don't think seriously, but there's, for some reason we, we are connecting with some, some very powerful, so it, it's like a gift, this is a gift for me, to be here, to sit here, to breathe, to, to be in this building as, as a gift. Who are your customers? What are the kind of people that are drawn to your art? Galleries come and buy. I mean, I, I, I had them. Um, order form, so they order, yeah. They, they order, it, it, now I am going to sell my big pieces because I have only, I don't trust before they're going to buy big pieces, but look like they, they can buy. So I will grow up um, my, yeah, my regular catalog, you know, and small pieces now for big, for next year. So they're just average Americans, they like your art because it's different? Yeah, I guess uh, it's, everything is made with uh, something like, uh, you know, look like, like delicate, like uh, a little attention. Everything you make it with, more little effort from yourself, you know, hundred percent. No, no, no half, no half. Nothing is half. You have to put it hundred percent for everything, for all the plans, or whatever you do. You have to do yourself first, and the later you see, effort first, the later the grace second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're a woman from a traditional society. Um, and yet you're very independent, um, you made it on your own. Tell me a little about that. Um, no, 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 it's not only my country, it's all over. We're not uh, allowed to do those things what they're supposed to, guys do. They don't, they don't like, uh, very negative. I had a lot of no, experience here in America too, but um, Bolivia, you can understand that, you know, it's third world, people are more conservative, but uh, here in America, very, very, believe me or not, but you, you can see here too. But, um, you know, so I never care, it's what I, for me it's no, no, no big deal what they think or not, because I feel a free person to do whatever I feel, and whatever I want to do it, and how, how I can become later, it's because it's in my hand, if I want. I, I, I don't even look it that way, I, I will get some effect to the other people, like uh, guys, you know, or men. So how do you keep that your center? Um, you know, I think it's come from the family. My, my father gave me all the support, and always he told me, I can be first happy, first. And later you can express what you feel about. So all this is expression of love. 
as well. Mm. Tell me a little about these two pieces that are next to you. Mm. Yeah, okay. Like you see, this one is welded, the body in, the, in these boards. And later, I do the most, I do most pieces myself, especially the big pieces, especially. It's made with copper, and I do all this by hand. Make this shape, pumping, and I do the welding. And it is just a acetylene oxygen. And this this part, I, I do electric welding. Of course, I had a help, and my sister does all these details. She's getting good. She has also, she been living in Spain for a while, so she learned to paint in jewelry, you know, necklace, those, in, in, the, in the metal pieces. So she, you know, the life brings close to me, so we get together and, and make this business more successful. And mm -hmm. this one, this is one, the, one of the most popular pieces I've been selling now. I have different size, like this one in the, in the back. And I like that everything has something like moving or some, some life, you know. And something cute, fun. So that's what the people like. I, I like it what the people like. If I like, people will like. The same my experience. This is at least this summer season, we did excellent with the, this kind of creature, like a um, meme, also that people like it or something like that. So they remember some movies or something like that. It's a flower. Come hombre. Yes. <laughs> Se dice come hombre. Yeah. <laughs> we, call, we call him or, or she the come hombre because they have a big mouth. <laughs> Man eater. Aquí yo me planto, sirve como un árbol, y a mí no me llevan por otros caminos. Man Oh 